What's up guys, we're back again, and this time I'd like to discuss with you the Samazaryadny Carabine Simonova, or Simonova's Self-Loading Carbine System, better known as the SKS-45. Now today we're just going to do a quick overview of this rifle, more specifically my rifle, but if you're looking into a more extensive history and function of this rifle, please look into C and Arsenal's channel. Those guys are absolutely great if you're looking for very extensive backgrounds of weapons, their functionality, the history of their functionality, and about as in-depth of an analysis as you can get. C and Arsenal will cover all that. But if you're looking just for a quick overview and to talk about the SKS, this is the video. Now we just got back from the range with this beautiful SKS 45 dated in 1950. Four. This rifle is all matching except it does have an original stock but the stock has been force matched. You see the old serial number crossed out and the new current serial number put on. But everything else matches on this gun down to the bolt and all the different parts of the bolt. Now my view of the SKS is a basically a rugged ranch gun and that's the uh, interpretation it's got in the US. But I wanted a little bit more than just a ranch gun. I wanted a bit of a collectible. That's why I wanted a Russian SKS, which there are far fewer of than the Chinese variants, and many agree or think that these are made quite better. And I would have to agree to a certain point because you are getting the old world standards of machining when it comes to these 50s era rifles. The main criticism of the SKS, honestly my main criticism, criticism would be the bolt system. Being a two-piece bolt kind of flopping around against each other, it is a less than perfect design. Next, my biggest criticism would be the trigger. It's very spongy. It's kind of hard to tell when that thing's gonna go off. If you're going kind of fast on your shot, it tends to go off sooner. And if I'm going slow on my shot, trying to take a precise shot, it seems to take a year to go off or a mile worth of travel. Now this rifle does hold a special place in the history of military self-loading rifles. Kind of sitting in the shadow of the Garand and coming after the SVD-40, it wouldn't ever really get its time to shine in the Russian military, being outclassed by the AK-47 by the end of the 1950s, these would only be given to rear echelon troops and security forces. But these would actually appear in many conflicts across Eastern Europe, whether that be militia groups, groups fighting against communism, for communism, against the government, for the government, you would see many of these pop up in sporadic conflicts across Europe. And many other European countries would end up making their own, such as Romania and Yugoslavia, which those would also pop up in conflicts across Eastern Europe. Now, I just got back from the range, and the best group that I was able to achieve now after I got to the range, I fired a 10 shot group because I had to raise my front sight post. I was shooting very, very high. But once I got on target at 15, I moved to 50 off a tripod. And this was a three shot group I managed to achieve. Yes, that is a three shot group with Tela Impex, Impex steel case ammunition. Of course, 762 by 39. Once I kept shooting, the barrel got warm. I wasn't concentrating as much after that. My groups opened up quite a bit, but off of a cold barrel, that is absolutely astonishing. I don't know if I just got lucky, but that's what we're looking like, cold bore, 50 yards. So I'm really impressed by the rifle that I got. <coughs> now, let's go into a bit, let's go into some of the markings that these rifles have. Most of the markings that you see, most of mine happen on the left side here, and these are usually just inspection proof markings. The guy on the assembly line inspecting the parts, the parts are supposed to be to a certain specification, not bigger than this, smaller than this. They measure the part, part doesn't match to the specifications, it gets recycled, part does match to the specifications, it gets stamped with that worker's inspection stamp so they know who inspected it, and it moves on down the line. Now once that lot of pieces, um, pieces to firearms is all inspected, typically the line manager would inspect so many of those parts and he would give his approval. Now that's where you would see second stampings. You will see repeats of stampings or you'll see in the same spot one stamping and then another stamping right next to it. And then on another part you'll see the same stamping and then the same other stamping right next to it. That's most likely the person who um, looked at the part um, uh, 
CQ'd it, quality checked it, and then the manager of that line who also quality checked it. These guns will also have final inspection markings, which you can see looks like a circle with an O inside of it. Mine is located right there. I'll try to put that on the screen for you guys. And that shows that that final rifle was good to go after being assembled. Other final inspection markings on this rifle, I have another one on the stock somewhere, which, ooh, where is it right here? A circle with a dash right inside of it. And that was probably a final inspection mark for the stock, showing that the stock matched all specifications needed and it was ready for servicing. Now there are many other markings on here which I'm going to try and put up on the screen. Some stamps on the stock. Uh, basically every side of the stock has stampings. I'm gonna do my best to try to identify what those are and as I put them up on the screen, I'm going to try and label them. Now if they don't appear on the screen, that means that I probably didn't do a very good job at finding the information or the information was just not available. I've tried to look up extensively the a guide to the markings on SKS. It's not easy to do with the Mosins, which are much older. There's many guides as to what these markings mean and what they were put on there for. But when it comes to the SKS, I can't find an actual guide. There hasn't been a person that has really dedicated their life to this like some people have for the Mosin Nagant. Now, the thing about these old Russian stocks, they have this really um, reddish, blotchy tone to them that is really beautiful. They, it's very similar, if not the exact same, to this Mosin Nagant 9130. Or it appears to be a 9130. It's actually a refurbished XP or refurbished PE sniper rifle, which they call an XPE sniper rifle. The stock on the SKS is Arctic Birch. Um, I assume maybe the same on the Mosin. And they dipped these in pine tar, in which they would later move to a shellac. So I'm not sure if this is pine tar or not, and if this is shellac or not. All I know is do not use blast and shine on these guns to clean off old grease and cosmoline. Why you ask? This is why you ask. So you see all this, the ruining of my finish on this historical refurbished sniper rifle? Yes. Do not do that. Do not learn the hard way. Blast and shine is really good for taking off cosmoline, cleaning out crevices. It destroys this old Russian finish. So do not learn the hard way like I did. Luckily it didn't get done to a very expensive gun. But in all, I'm uh, very happy with this rifle. Uh, let's go ahead and take out the bolt really fast so I can show you the stampings and the serial numbers on the bolt. So disassembly, if you don't already know, make sure weapon's clear. We want to drop the hammer to begin with. Safety off, hammer dropped, lever comes out with this Russian one, it has to be up like a flag to work correctly, that comes out, dust cover comes off, spring comes out, bolt will come out in two pieces, let's go ahead and set this down here, and here we are, our two piece floppy bolt system which I would assume would not work too well once a lot of dirt and grime got in here. But you should keep your rifle clean, right? Now, as we look closely on this bolt, we have lots and lots of stampings, proof markings. We flip open over this one. Here we have many, many stampings all on the side here and all on this side. They're not coming through that well. I'll give you an up close shot of that. Now, of course, as I said, you will get stampings as approval markings for the rifle and for the rifle parts, final inspection markings, as I said, once the rifle is assembled. Now, being that this is a refurbished rifle, it was sent back in and rearsenaled. Rearsenaled guns, Russian guns, are going to have usually almost twice as many stampings because they were sent back in to be re -arsenal. They had to be re-inspected. They had to make sure they were okay to go out to the field. Now that's the benefit of getting a re gun. Typically with a re gun, with a re gun, you are going to get a very well-functioning firing firearm. If you're looking for a collector SKS, 
an all original gun, all matching, never refurbished. Not only are you going to pay $900 or $1,200, which is absolutely ridiculous, that gun is going to be practically brand new, which can be a bad thing. Because if you're planning on shooting it, which many people, you buy a gun for that much, you're going to be scared to take it out, lest it get a scratch. But you do go out to shoot it, that gun really hasn't stood the test of time. There could, the stock could crack, there could be something just wrong with the gun. Firearms that have been refurbished, SKS that have been refurbished, Mosins that have been refurbished, those guns are in top quality, they've been inspected, and you can be sure you can put thousands of rounds through them without any issues. So we're going to get out to the range again. I just came back from the range, of course, doing some little accuracy testings and adjusting my sights, but we're going to get back out to the range. I'm going to make a cool shooting montage for you guys, and then maybe after that montage, we can do a little bit of demonstration. But I think I've talked enough for today. You guys don't like to watch videos that are more than like six or eight minutes, it seems. So I'm going to end this here, and um, you guys have a good evening, and I will see you next time, or I'll see you at the range. See ya.